Hey y'all, thought I'd do another video today, and this one I'm not going to show any vinyl records, but this is more of a video to show um, books about vinyl collectors and some videos too about uh, vinyl collectors and the record industry in general, which uh, I find to be a interesting uh, topic unto itself. So, um, the first book I'm going to show here, I'm going to show two books, but the first book I'm going to show here has been featured in the, the VC once or twice, at least from the videos I've seen. Our friend, the Vinyl Geek, who does Vinyl Rewind, fantastic series, if you've never seen it before, um, actually got to go to the premiere of the book in Los Angeles, got to interview the author and also some of the contributors. So, the book is Dust and Grooves by uh, Ellen Petz. Um, this is just a wonderful book. Ellen is a uh, photographer, uh, originally from Israel, but he moved to New York. And he has just gone through and um, shot up photos of different record collectors all throughout Europe and the United States. And this is just a wonderful photo book. Um, it's a little bit pricey. Uh, I think I got mine for about 60 bucks, but I, to me it was uh, money well spent because it's worthwhile because I spent hours taking a look at each photo um, that he shot. It also ends with uh, 10 different interviews of different uh, record collectors. So this is Sheila Burgle. Um, who does uh, some compilation records for Ace Records, which is based out of the UK. Uh, her whole collection is based on uh, female singers, uh, predominantly in the 60s and the early 70s. Uh, and just reading her interview is just uh, fascinating. She was one of the, the contributing editors to the book. Um, the book, at least I have, is the second edition, and the second edition, what I liked about it is it featured an interview with Questlove. Um, again, I'm not a big hip-hop guy, but when I see Questlove, when I see him interviewed, I sit down and listen, because the guy is just fascinating to hear him talk, and he just has a huge collection um, that they happen to profile for the second edition of this book. Um, see if I can't find a shot of, yeah, there's a shot of his collection. Um, now, <laughs> the interesting thing that I heard is they are coming out with a third edition of this book, uh, but the third edition is going to actually have some vinyl with it, so I guess if you just keep waiting, uh, it's just add more stuff, but you know, I'm hoping uh, Mr. Uh, Pats or Pates uh, will actually profile some of the folks around the vinyl community because uh, I think there's quite a few of us that would make for some interesting uh, subjects. So I can't highly recommend this enough. I'm going to include a, a link to the website and uh, see if I can't find the Vinyl Rewinds uh, video uh, of the, the opening party in LA for this. So this is a great one. Uh, next one is another good one that uh, this one was published in Europe. This is uh, Passion for Vinyl. Um, I'm hoping folks can find a copy, but these things are limited. And uh, Cactus Records in Houston, which is probably the best record store in the area, just happened to have a few copies. And uh, I think I got this for about 30 bucks. Um, this has a different take on it. it. It's not so much of a photo book, but it does have photos. Uh, but they they interview uh, different folks around the, the industry. So they're talking about uh, CEO. They interview the CEO of Atlantic Records, who probably has the largest collection on earth of something like 100,000 records or something like that. But they also interview uh, Michael Fremer, who a lot of folks know. Uh, Henry Rollins is here. Uh, the uh, lead singer for Opeth whose name escapes me right now. He's profiled in this book. Um, it starts out and it has a nice chapter about you know how vinyl is pressed and it talks a little bit about the history. Um, then it goes into the interviews for each of the subjects. 
and it caps it off with you know kind of the the history of the the record industry now the cool thing about this book is it comes with a nice nice little ten, uh, seven inch record by two of the artists that are profiled in the book I haven't played it so I don't know what it sounds like but uh, this this is also a really good book if you can find it definitely pick it up um, now I want to talk about um, three different movies. Now each of these movies was released to coincide with uh, Record Store Day. Um, so the first one I'm going to show is probably the one that I like the least, but still not a bad watch. It's Brick and Mortar Love. Uh, this came out in 2013. Um, this uh, pretty much profiles a record store out of Louisville, Kentucky called Ear Ecstasy and it, it kind of went into the decline of this particular record shop. Um, it, losing a record store is sad of course but uh, I think the one thing that really kind of set me off in this this movie was the record store owner of Ear Ecstasy. He got to the point where he was begging and pleading to come in to have people buy vinyl in his store. Um, I'm sorry if you're you're getting to the point where you're trying to beg and plead then Something's wrong with your business. Either you got to shut down or do something different. So he does it twice. I hope I'm not letting the cat out of the bag in the movie. The first time, yeah, I can understand it. You're trying to rally the community around the store, but second time, didn't you learn your lesson? Um, sorry, I, I don't have any sympathy for you. I mean, it's sad to lose a record store, but you really got to change your business model if it gets to begging and pleading a second time around. But this is interesting. Um, if you can find it online or rent it, yeah, it's worth a watch. Buying it, mm, don't recommend it so much. Uh, next up is a film, a film that came out the same year, 2013, as uh, Brick and Mortar Love, and this is Last Shop Standing. And this is a, more of a profile of UK record stores, and uh, this one I like a lot better than Brick and Mortar Love because it, it goes out and it talks about. Uh, they go and they interview different artists, so Paul Weller, uh, Johnny Marr, uh, Billy Bragg, different UK artists about, you know, their passion for record stores, and uh, it talks to different record store owners, like the, the owner of Rough Trade Records, which is uh, just a famous record store in the UK, and it talks about the, the rise and decline and kind of the history and how folks feel about it, but it was very interesting to hear different people talk about their passion for the record stores and shopping for records, and this one I felt was was worthwhile. Now, the third one, I actually do not have a, in a physical format. This came out uh, in Record Store Day on in 2011, and it's called Sound It Out. And out of the three movies that I'm, I'm featuring, and I'm trying to include a picture of it here, and I'll include a link to the trailer to each of these down below. Um, Sound It Out was a was probably the best because it just features one record store, the Teesside in the UK, uh, in Teesside in the UK, and uh, the, the record shop is called Sounded Out. Um, and I find the uh, find the people that collect the records and they, they look at the different people shopping for records, I find that just as fascinating as the record shop itself, because you, you got quite the gamut of personalities that are coming in for and shopping for records. And if you take a look at the trailer, you can kind of get a sense of, you know, the different personalities that are coming into shop for records but uh, that one is probably the most enjoyable um, I recommend getting it streaming if you can um, it's wonderful um, what I found funny was um, one of the the guys that's profiled is a big status quo fan and for you guys in the UK and Europe um, you come here to the States and you talk about status quo most people aren't gonna know what the hell you're talking about. Um, I didn't even know what who status quo was until I saw a French remake of the song You're in the Army Now. And my wife heard that and she's like, I've heard that song before. I'm like, no, I, I think it's a, a French original. <laughs> she said, no, and they found the original song for me and then I was like, oh, status quo. And then we kind of delved into their catalog. But yeah, um, just seeing this guy's passion for status quo and calling him the quo uh, was so fascinating to me. And it just uh, uh, it, 
it's interesting to see all the little bands that are like big, I shouldn't call status quo little, but all the bands that are big elsewhere that just have never made it in the States. So, uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, I'll include some links below. If you know of any other videos about uh, vinyl and vinyl collecting or books, great books about vinyl and vinyl collecting, please show them or shoot me a link, put some comments down below. And thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.